The idea of flying has always been a constant dream for humans. The dream of freedom that ignites within us when we see birds fly up in the open sky. How do they do it? We have learned from these birds and figured out how to fly using airplanes, balloons, gliders and rockets. We can find traces of the idea of flying in the Greek myth of Icarus, where Daedalus crafted wings made of wax and feathers for himself and his son Icarus to escape from the island of Crete. Even among Leonardo da Vinci's inventions, we can find flying machines such as the ornithopter that looks like a bat and a primitive form of a helicopter that resembles a screw. Many people have attempted to fly, building equipment and machines resembling birds. Well, often miserably failing. Until December 17, 1903, when the Wright brothers showed the world that humans can fly. They invented the first flying airplane. Since then, airplanes have developed incredibly from this to this, up to this. If you have ever been on an airplane, you can remember the feeling of being up in the sky, flying above the clouds. Have you ever wondered how such a huge machine can stay up in the sky? Let's find out. Take a balloon filled with helium and a teaspoon. What happens when we release them? Well, the balloon will rise up since it's lighter than air, while the spoon goes straight down to the ground as it is heavier than air. A jumbo jet airplane weighs the same as 7 million spoons piled together, and it flies. How is that possible? Let's take a look at the airplane in detail. There are four forces acting on the airplane in flight. Lift, drag, thrust, and the airplane's weight. The engine's thrust pushes the airplane forward, while the drag pulls it backwards because of the air resistance. The weight of the aircraft pulls the aircraft towards the ground, while the lift force is what keeps the airplane up in the sky. On an aircraft, wings are responsible for generating lift. The larger the aircraft, the bigger the wings, since larger wings produce more lift and support a heavier plane. Now, let's perform some experiment with paper planes to test this. Let's start by making four different paper planes. You may have made a paper airplane at home before. If not, here is how you can make one. Keep in mind that we have to use the same type of paper, so each plane with the same. Make sure to follow the same construction method for all these planes, changing only the wing size. Then number the planes and start launching them in air. Make sure to use the same force while throwing the planes. Start the timer when you release the plane and stop it when the plane touches the ground to measure the time of flight. Repeat the launch of each paper plane five times to get an average time of flight. Here is what our test results look like. Each of these designs have different flight times. On this graph, we have the average flight time recorded for design one and the other designs. As you can see, the larger the wing area, 
the longer the paper plane stays in air. This is because large wings generate more lift. This is the reason why the Airbus A380 has gigantic wings compared to the wings of a Cessna. Let me ask you a question. Can you see the lift force holding the planes up in the air? No, of course you can't really see this force, but you could feel it if you were on the wing. Wind tunnels are used to visualize and measure these lift forces, but these wind tunnels facilities are extremely complex. Today, scientists and engineers around the world run models on computers to visualize the airflow around airplanes. These models are known as computer simulations. You can actually build a model of the same paper plane compute the lift force and see the flow directly on your computer using ANSI simulation technology. This is a pressure map on the surface of the paper plane. The red region means high pressure and the blue region means low pressure. This pressure distribution acting on the top and the bottom of the paper plane creates an effective upward force, the lift. Oh, but wait, let's first explore what pressure is. When you pump air into your soccer ball or basketball, you're increasing the air pressure inside the ball to get the right shape and bounce. Air exerts pressure not only from the inside, but also from the outside. In fact, air pressure is acting on you right now. Lift is generated by a pressure difference across the body. We can visualize this by performing two simple experiments. If we blow air under a ball, we can see it going up in the air. This because the blower creates higher pressure on the bottom side of the ball. The pressure difference generates a vertical force that pushes the ball in the air. We can see the same thing from a different point of view. If we use a vacuum cleaner and put the nozzle on a ball, this will generate a low pressure region that will suck the ball up. Pressure is not the only thing that influences lift. The speed of the object is also important. Speed is simply how far something goes in a given time. For example, a cyclist can ride at 40 km per hour. Super fast bullet trains travel at the speed of about 320 km per hour while rockets can reach up to 29,000 km per hour. It's incredible, isn't it? Let's apply this concept to an airplane moving through air. For simplicity, let's focus on a cross section of the wing, which, by the way, is called airfoil. The airfoil is a particular geometrical shape that has been optimized for several decades to produce lift and keep heavier and heavier planes up in the air. The air naturally flows around the body following its shape. On the bottom side, the air slows down due to the presence of the body, while on the top, the air accelerates to follow the body shape. This creates a low pressure region on the top of the airfoil and a high pressure region on its bottom that will push the wing 
up. How are speed and pressure linked? Well, there was this very smart guy from the 18th century, Daniel Bernoulli, who came up with this relation between pressure and speed or velocity that tells us that if the velocity increases, the pressure decreases, and the other way around. Let's see if this is true or not for our paper plane. To study this using ANSI simulation technology, we had to first create a digital 3D model of the paper plane. Then, when you throw the plane, you actually release it with a certain inclination that is called angle of attack. This is the angle between the direction of the motion of the paper plane and the orientation of its wing. For small angles of attack, the lift increases as the angle gets larger, as you can see in this graph. However, this does not apply for large angles of attack due to a physical effect called stall. In the simulation, we can directly set different angles of attack for our 3D model. Then we set the plane flying speed and we are ready to go. To obtain the results, this tool relies on complex mathematical equations called the Navier-Stokes equations. But don't worry, the computer will solve them for you. Here are the velocity vectors around the paper plane. The arrows show the direction of the airflow. The red color means high speed and the blue means low speed. The air at the bottom slows down since the plane acts as an obstacle. This increases the fluid pressure. On the top side, the fluid accelerates to bend and follow the shape of the wing. This reduces the air pressure. We can better see this if we plot the pressure on the wing. Similar to the velocity, red means high and blue means low. The bottom side of the wing is subjected to high pressure while the top experiences a lower pressure. This is how lift is generated. From our experiment, we could only deduce that longer time of flight means a larger lift force. However, using simulations, we can directly estimate the exact lift force acting on the paper plane. With ANSYS simulation technology, we can easily change the wing size of the paper plane and find out which design will produce more lift. In this graph, the lift produced by the different paper planes is reported. You can see that the models with larger wing area generate more lift. With this tool, you can analyze not just paper planes, but any geometry, even a full-scale airplane that probably will not fit in your home. These are live results of a P-51 Mustang airplane. Through simulations, we can see a lot more than experiments. We can visualize many different features of the airflow around the aircraft in real time and at the same time that cannot be done through experiments. For example, we can look at the motion of the air around the entire aircraft using arrows or visualize the three-dimensional distribution of velocity 
around the plane. We can also focus on specific parts of the aircraft, like the elevators or the wing, and understand how they influence the airflow using cut planes. Here is a cut plane of the wing showing the pressure distribution. As we can see, the top side experiences lower pressure than the bottom side, making the airplane fly. If you don't believe me, check this out. This is a model of a wing made with foam and attached to two rods. If we turn on the blower, we can see that the air around the wing lifts up the model due to the pressure difference on the top and the bottom sides of the wing. We learned what lift is and how it forms. But lift does not apply only to airplanes. Airfoils can be flipped upside down and used in sports cars to generate a downforce that keeps the car attached to the ground and increase its speeds in turns. Or uh, think about a rudder that is simply a symmetric airfoil used to generate a side force to turn a boat. Thanks to the ANSYS technology, we can visualize how a fluid moves around different objects and learn how lift is generated. But this doesn't have to be boring. Indeed, we can explore and study cool applications of lift. For example, the flying wing is a completely flat airplane that follows the same concept we applied for the airplane wing. We can visualize that the upper side of the wing experiences low pressure and the bottom side experiences higher pressure and how this pressure difference produces lift. Or uh, we can analyze, modify and improve the design of the flying suit that keeps skydivers up in the air for longer time. Increasing the size of the suit will improve the lifting effect. Even flying fishes use lift to glide for long distances and escape predators after jumping out of the water. With ANSYS simulation technology, we can explore how they use their fins to generate lift and fly. And helicopters? They don't have wings. Well, they actually do. The rotor is simply a set of rotating wings that generate lift during their motion. Even wind turbines use lift. Well, not to fly away, but to move the blades and generate electricity. The lift generated acts on the blade and pushes it on the side, starting the rotating motion that makes the wind turbine produce electricity. You can start to analyze and simulate all these applications, right now, directly on your computer, with the same technology that even NASA scientists use. Today, we learned that unless you have a jetpack like her, you need wings to fly. If you like this video, hit the like button below, share with your friends, and let us know in the comments what topics should we cover in our next videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to see our new videos.